On this episode of WTF, we're going to show you three ways to fry fish. A fish and chip style, a keto, and even a plant-based version. Hey, it's Chef Scott. And Janie, and welcome to WTF, where we help you transform food in your kitchen. So remember to subscribe and also ring the bell and stick around for our weekly giveaway. This week, we are showing you how to make a delicious New England style fried fish, even if you're keto, even if you're plant-based. So remember, we're gonna show you three different ways to fry fish today. If there's one way you're really interested in, you can check out that chapter in the links in the description below. And of course, we're here in Maine, so we love fried haddock, fried what's the other fried, fried scallops, yeah. fried everything, fried clams. Yeah. <laughs> and um, there's always the challenge of how do we get that really nice, crispy, crunchy coating? And today we wanted to cover how do we do that for everybody. Yeah. So, can you talk a little bit about the key to getting a crispy coating? So it comes down to how much uh, water is in your batter, what type of batter, the types of flour, and then we run into the issues of trying to make it keto. But we do have one ingredient that's going to help keep everything crisp forever, and it's called Evercrisp. You like that? <laughs> 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 Made me happy. <laughs> I lost my train of thought now. <laughs> All right, maybe we'll cut this out. Yeah, let's leave it in, it's fun. Um, so, okay. All right, let's start with our classic New England styled, you know, fried fish. What's going into that batter? Perfect. So <laughs> we're going to start with the, the basic, which is going to be all purpose flour. Uh, as little gluten as you can get into this is going to help prevent, uh, you know, that gluten from grabbing onto moisture and holding onto it, which then makes soggy batter. Mm -hmm. So uh, another ingredient that we have, sometimes people put cornstarch, but we're going to use batter bind. And batter bind is a mixture of, uh, of starch, but also it's modified so that it clings better to the fish. That way you don't end up with uh, basically a giant pocket around the fish where oil can get into or moisture can then leak out of. Mm -hmm. So batter bind's a great ingredient for this. Uh, you can't use that, you cannot use that in uh, keto just because of all the starch that's in it, mm. but if you could, it'd be great. All right. So then we have some baking powder, some baking soda. Those are gonna help uh, as the fish fries to create little pockets so an extra crispiness on the fish itself mm -hmm. or on the batter for the fish. Some salt for flavor uh, <laughs> and then Evercrisp. The last ingredient that we're going to add to it is seltzer water. If you wanted to use beer, you could absolutely use beer. Uh, some people use a mixture of seltzer water and vodka. The reason being is that the alcohol burns off quicker than mm -hmm. water will, so you get a crispier, almost like a, f a flash fry on it, but you have to make sure that you fry it completely or else you're gonna get a very alcoholic batter. Uh, we're just gonna go with seltz water. It's very easy to use, it's very common, and everyone can have it. So I'm just gonna mix this in, and once it's in there, this batter will be ready. And how much of this batter is the Evercrisp and batter blind compared to, uh, you know, just the AP flour? So the Evercrisp is always going to be around 20% uh, of the, fl the weight of the flour, but that also includes batter bind. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that I am replacing all the dry with some of the Evercrisp. Uh, and the Evercrisp can go anywhere between 5 to like 70%. So it really depends on the batter that you're making. Uh, in this one, I use about 20% of the batter bind, which is about 50 grams of this. Mm -hmm. So even amounts of the Evercrisp and the batter bind, just so we get enough cling and the crispiness. Yeah, and we really love this batter because it's really consistent. And one of the really, really nice things about adding Evercrisp to it is that if you are in a restaurant or a catering service and you need that fry to hold, adding the Evercrisp actually allows that crispiness to stay well, we say up to four hours hopefully people are eating it before then but you know if you need to put it in under a heat lamp for a little while or just have it out or have it for takeout it's going to make a really huge difference mm -hmm. in the quality of that crispiness 
So the next batter is going to be the uh, keto batter, and mm -hmm. this is very different. Uh, we're going to start with our fava bean protein concentrate. The fava bean protein concentrate does have some carbs in it, mm -hmm. so you want to just manage how much that you're adding to it. We start with about 50 grams of it, and it's basically the only thing that has carbs in there. And if you're going to be frying 8, 10, 15 pieces of fish, you're going to end up with like the perfect carb amount. You know, Anything under 5 is going to be great. So we start with that. We're going to add in almond flour. Almond flour is going to help give a, a nice texture on the outside. Our Evercrisp. Uh, Evercrisp does come from wheat, so if you're adverse to that, you can absolutely omit it. But it contains no gluten. It's technically gluten-free, and uh, it's all fiber, so it doesn't add any carbs. Mm -hmm. Some salt. Methicellulose. And then we have two eggs here and seltzer water, just like the last. But I'm gonna just dry mix these ingredients first. Yeah, and we know already that the Evercrisp, the Evercrisp is helping with adding crispiness. What is the role that the methicellulose is doing in this batter? Great question. So the methicellulose one is going to help thicken up this batter because it's made with things that are not made with flour. Mm -hmm. So it's going to help thicken it and act almost like that gluten to help create the coating on the outside, but also methicellulose E4M helps prevent water from seeping in. So when you put it on the outside, it's not going to just seep in and then make, uh, you know, blow out the batter one, and then two, make it uh, soggy in the end. Awesome. And then we're going to add our eggs. You can just add them right in and gently mix them. And then the last thing will be uh, our seltzer water. And then once it's just starting to mix in, and add in the seltzer water slowly, make a nice batter out of it. And as you whisk it, the methicellulose is going to hydrate. So over time, it'll get a little bit thicker. Uh, as time goes on, and you may just have to add a little bit more of the seltzer water, but if you're using it right away, you shouldn't have to worry about it. Mm. As Scott's finishing up the batter, we are going to take a quick break. We are going to fry the fish and then come back and taste test all three fried fish. Making the plant-based fish is pretty simple. It's a mixture of burger binder and a konjac gum gel, which we thicken with calcium hydroxide. We use the kelp powder to give the plant-based fish more of an oceany flavor. And for that flaky textural element, we use textured wheat protein to finish this off. We mix them all together, place them into a silicone mold, and then into the oven at around 300 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. Once it is firm, you can take it out, slice it, and cook it immediately. So for the New England style and the plant-based, we're going to use the same batter and that is going to be the flour-based batter. The good thing about the New England style batter is that it doesn't contain any animal products, so it can be used for both. And for the keto style, we're just going to use the cod and the keto batter. Today we're using cod, but you can use any white fish if you wanted to use haddock or halibut, you could use those. The only difference when frying is going to come with the temperature. The keto batter must be fried at a lower temperature so that it prevents burning. Anything higher than 325, you'll see a bit too much browning, and for the New England style batter, 350 degrees to 375 degrees is going to be perfect. Fry all of these for about one to two minutes per side or until golden brown, and then blot them dry on some paper towels. All right, we are ready to taste test these delicious looking fish. But first, I wanted to talk about this week's giveaway, which will be a bag of the batter bind and the Evercrisp. You can skip the batter bind, you know, if you can use it, but the Evercrisp is really nice in all these recipes. And in order to enter to win, leave in the comments below another seafood recipe that you would like to see us tackle here in the test kitchen. All right, Scott, which of these fish is what? Well, this here is the New England style, so it's the cod and the, uh, the regular batter. Okay. And then this is the plant base, which has the New England style batter as well. And then the one on the end is the cod and the keto batter. And all of these are the uh, plant based remoulade. Mm -hmm. So you can use it for every uh, recipe that's here. So you can break in and see how crispy it is and see right. how perfect. Cool. We're going to start with the New England style. Uh, I'm not going to put it up to my mic because <laughs> it's hot fish, but there's definitely a super nice crisp on these. Kind of see how great that yeah, looks. I can probably pick it up and show us. You can see how well it's sticking to that fish, right? Mm -hmm. There isn't a separation yep. between the no batter. No air pockets. 
That's very important. All right. I'm gonna dip it in the remoulade. I love this remoulade. I know we like came up with it a little while ago, but it's delicious, and it doesn't really matter if it's plant based or not. It's, it's yummy. Fried fish is tasty. <laughs> yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Super crispy. Yeah, like you said, no air pockets. Nothing. Nothing's falling down here. Mm -hmm. Falling down. Falling apart. <laughs> 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 All right, and this one. Still plant-based. Plant yeah. Okay. So same same batter. You'll notice it's just as crispy. Uh, we cut them a little bit smaller just mm -hmm. because the plant-based fish is obviously different than uh, regular. But when you break into it, it's going to have those flaky bits. Um, yep. You can check out our, our video on it. I think we're going to make a new one too, just mm -hmm. to show this is a really cool recipe. And we actually altered it slightly. We added some uh, of our kelp powder, which is a newer ingredient, but it gives such a nice ocean flavor. It's not mm -hmm. fishy, it's not seaweedy, it, it's just ocean flavor. So it adds a really nice um, kind of, you know, background to it. Yeah. When you're eating it, it tastes and feels more like fish. Yeah, I know that in this episode, we didn't cover making the fish. Uh, I would highly recommend checking it out. It's a super cool mm -hmm. technique. And this fish is delicious, especially with the remoulade. Like, I can still get that ocean flavor. It's still, it's yeah. still coming through, even though I, I gave this a pretty good dunk. So it's okay, nice. All right. Keto on Last the end. but not least. This may be the crispiest. It's definitely very crispy. That's the hard part. It's just trying to make it as crispy as possible. Mm-hmm. I just find it's easier for me to just grab it with my hands. <laughs> Generally. Mm -hmm. and if you wanted to cut these into like fish stick style, mm -hmm. or smaller pieces or even like nuggets, if you wanted to then take these batters and fry any other seafood or literally anything else, it's going to be good onion rings to um, chicken nuggets. It's probably going to be delicious with this, these batters. Yeah. That one piece was still really hot. I was like, ooh. <laughs> that was the last one cooked. Yeah. Got a little burnt, <laughs> but it's absolutely delicious. It's tasty, again, perfect adhesion. Nothing's falling apart on any of these fish. Get today's recipes, check them out in the links in the description below. So until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie. And I'm Chef Scott. 